Olama is the easiest way to run LLMs on your own hardware. And today, I'm going to show you how you can expand the number of models that you have access to from the dozens of models in Olama's library to hundreds or even thousands. Thanks to Kamlesh for requesting this video. Let's go. Before we dig into the implementation, I want to answer the question, why do we want this? Olama hosts a lot of great models that suit a lot of different use cases. They range in size from Stable LM's 1.6 billion parameter model all the way up to Goliath's 120 billion parameter model. They range in purpose from Mistral's general purpose chat model to Lava's multimodal model that accepts image inputs as well, and all the way to Metatron, which is trained specifically on medical data. There are also models that are trained on different languages and even models that are trained to not be censored. But despite all these options within the Olama library, there are only about 65 total models that are supported right now. If we compare that with the popular model and data repository Hugging Face, we can see that there are almost half a million models that we could be playing with, with more added every minute. One popular trend in the open source LLM space is to take models that were trained on thousands of GPU hours and terabytes of data and improve it even further by adding new and refined data. Two leaders in this space are Eric Hartford of Cognitive Computations, who created the Dolphin dataset, and Technium of Noose Research that created Mistral as well as the Open Hermes dataset. You've probably seen a lot of models that were derived from these datasets. So while some of these great models are already on Olama, many more of them aren't. In fact, I just came across one on Hugging Face today that is a fine tune of Mistral that is trained on the Capybara and Hermes datasets that we just mentioned. It's a 7 billion parameter model that promises to beat Mistral on pretty much all of the major benchmarks by a pretty significant margin. So let's get it running on Olama. What we think of abstractly as models that have different strengths and characteristics are actually just a set of configuration files which determine the shape of a neural network, as well as a bunch of numbers which are the weights of the nodes within that neural network. The easiest one to use is called GGUF, or GPT Unified Format, and that's a successor of GGML. It's a binary format that allows models to be represented as one single file, including all the configuration and weights. While that's convenient for packaging and inference, most models will initially be released as safe tensors. Safe tensors are just another binary format that compresses all of the weights into a couple different files, but they need to be paired with other files which determine the shape of the network um, and how all of these weights are related. Importing a GGUF into Olama is actually dead simple, and it's really similar to the process that we covered in my first video, which I'll link above. Here, I'll just be following the documentation from Olama's GitHub page, which I'll link in the description below. First, we just want to download the GGUF file of our desired model. The bloke on Hugging Face is pretty prodigious at quantizing models into this GGUF format. So here, I'm on the bloke's page on Hugging Face, specifically within the model that I am interested in. So for quantized models, I would recommend this Q4KM quantization. Basically, quantization is just a trade-off between how much compression you get versus how much accuracy your model is going to have. So the less accurate it is, the smaller your model is going to be. The more accurate it is, the larger your model is going to be at the end. Um, but if you check out the blokes page, he kind of has all of these little readmes for the different size models. And so you can choose your own as you want. OK, so next, we just want to create our empty model file. And when we edit it, I'm just going to paste in from and then the location of the file that we just downloaded. That will point Olama to where everything is that it needs to get started. Additionally, according to Olama's documentation, some models that you're importing yourself may need um, the specific prompt template to be specified as well in order to work properly. I know that this model is based on the ChatML standard, uh, which was created by OpenAI and is sort of becoming the main standard across the model space. So I'm just going to paste that in as well. So here I'm defining the prompt template, which you're already familiar with, as well as parameters for stop characters. And those are essentially just special characters that lets the model know that it should stop uh, creating new text. Finally, we can use the Olama CLI to create our new model. So it looks like Olama was able to create all the layers and finish the command with a success. OK, so now we get to try it out. I'm just going to run our model with Olama run and then the name of our model. Looks like it's working. The Capybara dataset that this model was fine-tuned on is supposed to excel at multi-step chats, so let's try one of those. Tell me something briefly about Capybara. Okay, great. It looks like it knows a lot about that. Let's continue with, wow, what are two things that make them so adorable? So now it actually needs to know what we're referring to in the previous chat. All right, perfect. So that was the easy way to use a model that was already converted into a GGUF for us. But I want to take it one step further and show you how to do this conversion yourselves. It's only one or two more extra steps, and knowing how to do this will unlock way more models for you. So the first thing that we want to do is go to the models page on Hugging Face. Next, we want to go into its models and versions and confirm that it's one of the supported architectures. Olama's docs uh, specify that they support Llama, Mistral, and a couple others. Um, but there are a lot of different architectures out there, so just be careful. So to do that, we just want to go into this config file here and confirm that under architectures, the architecture starts with Mistral or Llama. And then the rest of this is also fine. 
Here we see that this is a Mistral architecture, so we're good to proceed. Next, we can follow the Hugging Face instructions for downloading the model. Hugging Face repositories are just Git repositories under the hood, so if you've ever used GitHub or GitLab or something like that, you should feel right at home. One exception is that Hugging Face repositories deal with a lot of large files, specifically the safe tensors that I was talking about before, and so you're going to need to have an extra tool installed called git lfs, or large file storage. So just copy paste that command and your files will begin downloading. Now one caveat is you won't actually see a progress bar as you normally would, and that's because uh, these really large files are downloading in the background. I expect this total download to take about 10 minutes depending on your internet connection, but one pro tip that I have is even though you don't have a progress bar, you can actually just open up a second terminal window and then look at the status of the downloads yourself by inspecting the files. So here I'm doing ls, which lists all the files, and then hl basically shows me the size of the files in a human readable format. Once the download completes, we'll have all the files needed to convert into one single GGUF file that we already know how to use with Olama. First, cd into the directory of the model that we just downloaded. Next, I'm going to paste in a command straight from the Olama docs. This is a Docker command that quantizes our model into the resulting GGUF format, and I'm passing in uh, q4km as my parameter for quantization level. If you run this command without that flag, it'll show you all the different levels that you can choose from, but it's the same as the ones that the bloke will give you. Depending on your hardware, this will only take a minute or two. We're going to see a lot of output, but that doesn't really matter until the very end. And at the very end, we're shown our original model size as well as our quantized output size. We can see that our output is about one quarter the size of our input. And that makes sense because we're quantizing the original 16 byte weights down into only four bytes. So looking at our folder again, we see that we have two new files, this f16.bin as well as the q4km.bin. And that last file that I mentioned is going to be our GGUF file that you can use with Olama just like we already practiced. So that's it. You're now able to bring in hundreds of new models to bring onto your machine to use with Olama, and you can even quantize them to have different performance characteristics. Next, I want to hear what you're going to do with this. So share in the comments, what's the favorite model that you found in Hugging Face? Or were you able to do something interesting with quantization and maybe low memory devices? Thanks for joining me. To see what else I'm working on, please be sure to like and subscribe. Lastly, I just wanted to give a shout out to my friend Olivia. Me and all the llamas are rooting for you.